Praise God. I know Pastor Dot asked me to bring a testimony about my life, and um, I will get there as, as we go along. But um, I really want to talk to you about the cornerstone, which is Jesus Christ, our rock. Okay, and we know that we need to build our lives on the rock, which is Jesus Christ, our cornerstone. And uh, in this life, we, storms are going to come our way. We're going to see trouble. But if our lives are built on the rock, on Christ, we will not fall. And, and Jesus said it himself in John 16, verse 33. He said, in this life you will have trouble, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Isn't that an amazing blessing? So we see that Jesus is our cornerstone. And for us to understand what a cornerstone is, in ancient building practices, the cornerstone was the principal stone that was placed at the corner of a building. So the cornerstone would be the largest, the strongest, and the most solid rock. And they would place the stone at the corner of the building, and the whole building would be built around this cornerstone that would stand on the strong structure. So Jesus himself describes himself as the cornerstone that the church would be built upon a unified body of believers. So we see that you have the cornerstone, you have the church, which are the believers, and this whole building comes together with Jesus Christ as the main stone. Isn't that amazing? And stones are so significant. I don't know if you've ever thought about it. When I, when I, when I was preparing this message, I thought, you know, stones are so significant. In the Old Testament, the Bible speaks a lot of physical stones. People used to set up memorials to thank God for certain things, or they, they, they conquered a certain challenge or a battle, and they would put a memorial up of stones. So these are physical stones, but when we get to the New Testament, the Bible speaks of spiritual stones. So there's a big difference, hey? but it has the same meaning. And um, if, if we look at Joshua, when he came to lead the Israelites into the Promised Land, he was coming from the east, from the desert, and he had to cross the Jordan River to get to Jericho. Jericho was going to be their first challenge, their first battle. And when the priests carried the Ark of the Covenant, as they put their feet at the water's edge, the waters rolled back and piled up many miles to the north. And the Israelites were able to cross over the Jordan River on dry ground. And, they, and then God said to Joshua, Get one man from each of your tribes. Get a large stone, a boulder, that he has to carry on his shoulder. So we have these 12 massive stones that they set up as a memorial. And I don't know if any of you have heard of Stonehenge in England, where they build those stones. So they find a lot of these kind of stone circulars in, in, in Israel. And uh, it's so significant because these were memorials that were set up by people, by the Israelites, to celebrate what God had done for them. So these stones were almost like a foreshadow of Christ. Okay. Amen. And if we look at stones, what did David do? He killed Goliath with a stone, right? What about Jacob? He put a stone under his head one night, and he wrestled with an angel, and he dreamt of a stairway going up to heaven, and he saw angels ascending and descending upon them. Just by sleeping on a stone. That must have been hangover uncomfortable. Anyway, so we can see the significance of stones throughout the Bible. Now, the book of Isaiah has many references to Jesus the Messiah. If you read the book of Isaiah, you should study the book of Isaiah. It speaks a lot of the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ. And in Isaiah 28 verse 16, it says, and this is now a prophecy of many, many years before Jesus came. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. And the one who trusts in him will never be dismayed. Woo! Isn't that amazing? So the body of Christ is like a building, and the cornerstone is Jesus Christ, and he holds this whole building together. And if we read in Ephesians 2 verse 19, Paul says that we are no longer foreigners, we are no longer aliens, but we are fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus himself, 
Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. So I just want to tell you something. When you give your life to Christ, you are no longer an alien and a foreigner. Do you understand that you belong to something so much bigger? You belong to this building that was erected by God himself and Jesus Christ being the cornerstone. You are not just some piece of driftwood drifting out at sea. You have a purpose in your life. You are part of a building that God has erected. And Jesus Christ is our cornerstone. So don't just think that you're just nobody, okay? You're not a foreigner. You're not an alien. You're part of God's house, his building, his people. You are part of a body that's very important. Okay. In Matthew 16, Jesus is walking with his disciples, and he asks them this question. Who do people say the Son of Man is? So the disciples began to answer him. Some said, hmm, people say you are John the Baptist. Some people say you are Elijah. Uh, some people say you are Jeremiah. And, and some people say you are this and that prophet. But Jesus says to his disciples, but who do you say that I am? And immediately Peter answers, he says, you are Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus replies and says to him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but my, by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now let me ask you something. It was at this point that Jesus called Peter, Peter. Before this revelation that Peter received, his name was Simon. And the, the authors in the, the Gospels always refer him to Simon Peter so that, that we can see who this person is. But he was never Peter before this revelation. He was Simon. Even Jesus said to him, Simon, son of Jonah, who do you say I am? And Jesus is so impressed with Peter's answer because he realizes that that could only have been a revelation from God, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, because not, not even his other disciples understood that. Nobody on earth knew that this was the Son of God, the Messiah. And then it is at this point that Jesus calls Peter, Peter, and Peter means rock. Now Jesus is saying, he's, is Jesus saying he's going to build his church on Peter the rock? No, Jesus is saying, that his church will be built on the revelation that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And this revelation is, becomes the bedrock of our lives, our Christianity, our belief system, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He's not an ordinary man. He came to this earth as the Son of the living God. And we need to understand who he is. So when we talk about a chief cornerstone, we understand that this is the Son of God we're talking about, not just an ordinary man. Now, isn't it interesting that before this point, Peter was called Simon, like I said. His whole life he was Simon. But then he receives this massive revelation, and immediately his name changes to Peter the Rock. His identity changes. His whole life he's called Peter, but he gets this revelation and his name changes. His identity changes. Now that is what happens to us when we get revelation. Our whole identity changes. If we could understand and have a revelation of who we are in Christ, our whole lives would change. Our identity would change. The names that people call us would change. So understand who you are in Christ, who we are, this building, this, this chief cornerstone. Do we understand this, how precious it is? Right, in Matthew 7, 24, it says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. Now, the Bible is not saying whoever hears these words. You need to put the words into practice. Okay, it's not good enough to just listen to the word of God. We need to put the word of God in practice. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall 
because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. So in life, like we said, what Jesus said, we're going to have trouble, but we need to be of good cheer because Jesus has already overcome for us. We're going to have trouble. We're going to have storms. But it is our responsibility to build our lives on the rock, Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. It is our responsibility to read the word every day, study the word, put it into practice in our lives. We need to pray. We need to come to church. We need to lay a foundation. Because we cannot wait until a storm arises. Have you ever seen someone trying to build a house in a storm? doesn't work. We need to build our house before the storm comes. So when the storm comes, we know what to do. We know that we are standing on the rock. We're not going to crash like that house in the sand. Okay, you need to be ready when trouble comes. Jesus said, you're going to have trouble. Okay, these are Jesus' words, not mine. Jesus said, you're going to have trouble. But have your house ready, built on the rock. Don't try and build your storm and start scrambling. What am I going to do now? And you, and you don't know, and you're running through your Bible. What scripture do I use now? Because the storms hit me. Get your life founded on the word of God. So when the storm comes, you know how to take that storm head on. And you can tell the devil where to go. Okay. And then when the storm comes, we need to run to the fortress, which is made of stone. We know where to run to when we're in, t in times of trouble. We need to build our lives on the rock. And when those storm comes, we'll know exactly where we need to run to. So I'm going to just share my testimony for a couple of minutes. About 12 years ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And sure, it was a shock, but... Um, it didn't bring a lot of fear into my life because I'd been walking with the Lord and I'd been studying the word and I was in prayer. So it didn't shake me. I, I, just, I just knew I was going to be okay. And so, um, you know, I had four young children in the home and I had a lot of support around me, a lot of prayer. And um, I began to just confess the word. I knew that God is the healer. I always knew my whole life that Jesus is the healer. And I just began to confess healing scriptures every day. I said, thank you, Father, that by the stripes of Jesus I'm healed. I began to declare that I will live and not die. I began to declare that I will live a long life, that I will see my children's children. Amen. So by having your house built on the rock, when the storm comes, you know what to do. And I knew immediately what to do. I knew immediately I need to start confessing scriptures. I need to start standing on the word. Because this is not a small battle. This is a life and death battle. And sometimes we, find, we, we face these battles where we need to be ready and take them on. Because life does throw things at us. Let's face it. You can be the best Christian in the world, but that's not going to keep you safe from storms and troubles. They're going to come. And we need to be ready to face them. So I had a decision to make. Was I going to go to treatment? How, how big is my faith? How strong is my faith? Am I going to trust God through this? So I made a decision I wasn't going to go for treatment. Now, I'm not saying that's for everybody, okay? It's where you are, where your faith is, okay? So don't take what I'm saying to you today. But my heart was strong. I always trusted in God. I knew that God's the healer. I've seen God heal throughout my life. I was not going to doubt God. I was not going to say, okay... Jump off the, the cliff, what, what's going to happen now? No, no, no. I put my faith in God and I began to trust. I had people standing with me and we began to pray. My husband here is, is a man of prayer. He got up at five every morning and he walked for me. And he hasn't stopped walking, from, praying for me for many, many years. And I have my children with me that stood by me and we prayed. And we trusted God. And slowly and slowly I got better. I never ever experienced sickness actually in 12 years. I've been very strong and well. And God's kept me going. And here I am today. Here I am today because of God. So don't be afraid. Life is going to throw things at you. But you have a, you have a strong foundation. You have a cornerstone that you can stand on. 
You don't have to fear what's going to come your way. You don't have to fear the economy. You don't have to fear crime. We have faced very bad crime situations in our home. We've had guns, people with guns at our heads. But yeah, we are still standing, still standing because God has taken care of us. And that's how we have to look at our lives. We have to put our complete trust and faith in God. Because how else do you live this life if you do not have someone that you can trust and have faith in? Praise God. And if I just want to read you the scripture, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7. And also, let me just say one thing. When you stand in faith, let me tell you, persecution comes, even from Christians. I can tell you right now that my family, my extended family, were very upset with me when they, when they heard that I wasn't going to look at the sickness. I, I just shrugged it off my shoulders. And they said to me, before the year is over, your, your children will be flow, uh, uh, throwing flowers on your grave because you're being irresponsible by not going for treatment. And once again, I say, that's for me, okay? If you, you don't listen to what I'm doing, you must follow what God tells you to do. But you will face persecution because you're doing things out of the box. You're doing things that the world's not doing. The world is running after things that are not going to actually give them the answers. We need to find the answers in Christ, our rock, every day. So let's read Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7. But we have this treasure in jars of clay. Now, what is a jar of clay? Doesn't that remind you of your physical body? A jar of clay, if you were to drop it, it will just break. And that's our bodies. Our bodies are very frail. We're not going to live forever. We get, we get older. We're going to die one day. But these jars of clay, that can break. Inside it has this very special treasure. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Ah, oh, the storms can come, but they're not going to crush you. You're going to be hard-pressed. There are times when you are hard-pressed. Just like when they squeeze, they take stones and they squeeze that olive. They have to rub that olive very hard before that oil comes. Okay. So we are hard-pressed, but we are not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. What does that mean, perplexed? Sometimes you face situations where you don't know where to turn to, isn't it? Some situations you think, I don't know what to do. But we are not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. The devil can bring sickness on your body. He can, strike, he can try and strike you down, but he's not going to destroy you if your life is built on the rock. There is no way he's going to destroy you. Okay. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may be revealed in our mortal bodies. Isn't that amazing? That even with this weak structure that we carry around our bodies, we have this amazing treasure that is living inside of us. The power of God, the life of Jesus Christ is inside of us. Isn't that amazing? So I just want to close off with this. Though a righteous man falls seven times, he will rise again. Are you going to be that righteous man that will rise up even though you fall seven times? You're going to build your house before that storm comes. And when that storm comes, you will not let anything knock you down. Amen. Amen.